Hey YouTube, how are we going? We're back with another video and today I'm going to be covering Forge Guard and why it's bad. Or so we think. I actually, if you said to me that Forge Guard is the worst mastery of all the classes, I would definitely agree with you. Um, but I think it's got a bit of a misnomer on how we treat it. So I'm putting out this video for you guys to kind of reconsider how to gear a forge guard defensively and some of the cool things that you can do with the introduction of just a few new things that have come in like 1.0. Um, so one of the things to consider with forge guard is it's a light build. Unless you have used the healing hands ward stuff, um, you would typically call it a light build. And if you're a light build, the, the thing you do for defensives besides, you know, cap your resistances, get your endurance, is just stack as much HP as possible and use Leech as your recovery. And that's been the standard for like almost every single class that, you know, is a life build because it's just so strong and you can't rely on things like armor to help with dots until now. We have an affix, which is armor is applied to damage of time effects. And the Forge Guard has really good access to it. Well, the Sentinel does, as well as having really good access to armor. So you can actually get a lot of damage reduction out of, you know, for damage over time effects out of just your armor nowadays. And if you combine this with a few other neat little tricks, like, you know, using a lot of endurance threshold, which is typically not something you would do. You would normally go for just whatever endurance threshold you get from stacking HP um, and then using life regen. You can look at a build that doesn't have as much HP as a lot of other Sentinel builds. Normally like a, a fully geared Sentinel will be like three and a half, four K HP, but may have a very equivalent EHP and also amazing recovery that isn't dependent on Leech. Leech is OP, but at the same time, Leech is also something that, you know, you need to be damaged before you start doing you know, or getting leech stacks. Whereas health regen, like the second you turn on, uh, or the second you take damage, you just like turn on your recovery straight away. And you can get a lot of health regen. So if you've been watching, you know, the gameplay so far, I'm running with, okay, it's 433 in the moment, but if we summon some forge minions, let's get them up. I can get up to about like 900. Um, health regen per second which when you look at my health pool and you can see that bouncing up and down is quite a bit so there we go so 865 i did change some gear but you can see that that's quite a lot and then i've also got like 1.3k endurance threshold so i'm actually quite tanky and my recovery is pretty insane and like if you just like look at my health i know this is like 240 to beauty corruption i'm standing in poison and my health is just recovering so bloody quickly. It's not even reaching the endurance threshold. And once it would get to that endurance threshold, I'd be taking 60% less damage anyway. So I wanted you guys to think about this when you're building your forge guard. I'm gonna go through this build in just a moment and show you some of the neat little techs. Another one is the healing hands thing. So you can see me doing this now, um, where if you heal your minion and you use the minion CP boots, you can just repeatedly spam healing hands traversal on a like one second cooldown so you can see me dashing about about there and um obviously like the volatile reversal thing so if you didn't know that all the you know enemy damage or enemy takes more damage enemy takes more damage over time effects uh they stack um so that's really powerful uh, and you can do a lot of damage out that way but yeah here's the concept of a build i'm a forged weapons build i'm using like lead forged weapons this build is feeling super smooth because i'm always tping a lot of minions with me it's super easy to kind of like get your you know forge weapons back i i build like a little bit of minion health but i'm not going crazy i've got a lot of healing with you know um my healing hands tree also proccing quite a bit but it is a very very smooth build and it's doing pretty good damage so far and i think it's going to go up um, once I like get just a few small little things here and there. So let's jump across and have a look at how this build plays. Um, it's like super tanky. You know, when I'm going up against Oribus, I'm, you know, able to just chunk most of his abilities, including some of the very powerful dot abilities. 
Um, but if we look at our tree, I'm using multi-strike as a way to generate my forge weapons with this node here. So I build up my armament stacks and then I manually cast a forge strike. And for each armament stack, I get a forge weapon. And that's really strong because it means that I get like a 100% chance to cast a, you know, or get a weapon each time I, I right click. And if you compare that to like Rive or the other nodes in the multi-strike tree, there are other ways you can create forge minions. Um, you can't get anywhere near the amount uh, that you can consistently in every scenario, whether it's like on, you know, huge monoliths or on a boss. Like this is the way that kind of, you know, works for everything, which is really good. And it's also very mana positive because I'm using my multi-strike there. So you can say go one, two, three, four, five, like that. And I get a minimum of four plus the forge strike coming down. Sometimes that can give me some as well. So that's really cool. Um, and then I use the Sunforge Great Helm, and that's going to give me up to. F I've got four health regen for forge weapon, but they can go up to five. Um, with twelve forge weapons, you're going to get about sixty flat health regen, which is quite a lot, as well as that like increased armor there. So that's a huge source of flat that I'm getting there, and then I'm building a lot of flat health regen everywhere. And then as much Endurance Threshold as I can get. And looking at the Eternal Gauntlets and the Code of the Array Sentinel as my armor mitigation. It's also a really nice chest piece, but I would prefer to use a Double of Honors tool because we're doing minion bleed damage at the moment. So the nodes here is kind of what I was saying at the start of the video. 25% armor mitigation also applies to your damage over time. And then you've got the base implicit there, so that'll go up to 24%. That one's the base of up to 30%. And then you can get the experimental affix there, that second line, 13% of armor mitigation. So if you had it like a tier seven, that'd be great. But honestly, a tier four is pretty good there. And that just really makes sure that like, you're not really gonna die from damage over time effects. And you're gonna get a lot of value out of armor. The forge guard passive is also really strong. The Stalwart, so when you're taking damage, you get 3% increased armor for each hit you've taken. And because you're not dodging or anything like that, you're going to find that you get quite a few stacks, especially in monoliths and stuff like that. So it's very easy to get above 70% armor. And if you invest heavily into it, you can go up to 80%. And like, it's just really good damage reduction. And suddenly your recovery of like 1k, 1.5k, I reckon is probably where I want to end up, is awesome. You know, that's like, recovering um a hundred percent of your health or 75 percent of your health in one second as well as just like having so much damage reduction um that you know you you can quickly recover that as as much as possible so your ehp is quite equivalent to a, a health build but you've got this going on so that's kind of where the build's at. Um, I am manually using Sigils of Hope. I'm using Volatile Reversal. The build is kind of fine without these two. You can also, uh, sorry, I, I am running a Badish. So the Badish is the source of bleed with as much melee attack as possible, um, as well as melee flat. So I consider myself like a, a, a physical build where I'm doing physical flat, not focusing on crit and bleed and then just using generic minion damage. And the, you know, it, it's some pretty good damage. I was getting probably about 250 to 300k ticks of bleed on the dummy. And if I would have a double of bonus tool, that would probably go into the 500s, 600s there because it's just such a powerful thing, but I need like a three LP one of those. So that's kind of what I'll be aiming for next. Um, just stacking health for the idols and stuff like that, but you can kind of see where the skills are at. I want to keep pushing this build. Uh, I'll have the planner down below. I didn't want to go through too much detail or anything like that in this video, but I just wanted to get this in your hands so you can think about if you've struggled with Forge Guard and you're like, what can I do differently? This is the kind of things that you can do differently. Think outside of the box, because if you're trying to build a health base um, or the traditional defensive standards of a Forge Guard, Paladin and Void Knight are just going to do it better. Like they're just better in every sense of the word because they just have better passives. Like you look at the Paladin, they've got this node, which is just 24% more health and like a bunch of awesome other nodes and armor and all this kind of stuff. And the Void Knight, sorry, the Void Knight has a bunch of leech. And then you've got like a nominally, you've got Holy Aura. Those are great abilities that just support you. So if you're trying to make your Forge Guard copy a Paladin or a Void Knight build, it's just going to be worse. So try and lean into what Forge Guard does well, which is the damage reduction, and it does have support for that health regen. So that's what I want you to think about. 
Uh, that last little bit also, I just want to touch on the Healing Hands tech. So this is what I was talking about here. Uh, this is the node that uh, allows for cooldown recovery. So what you do is you spec it like here. So you make your, um, your Healing Hands a traversal. And then you'll do a dash like this. And because it's a traversal, you will TP your minions with you. And then you'll do your Healing Hand swing. And if any of them are like missing any health, it will heal them and like recover 75% of the current cooldown. So it's at 3.5 seconds. 75% of that straight away um, means that like you, you're, you're sub one second effectively once you factor in like all your cooldown reduction and stuff like that. Pretty awesome uh, little tech there. And then you can use like the volatile reversal to uh, you know, bounce around. I've got the zero uh, mana version. So real low cooldown, 2.7 seconds there. That's it guys. I'm just gonna leave that video there. I don't think there's anything I really want to talk about in the passives. Oh, actually, there probably is. Um, the one thing I'm going to go for is the more or less damage taken there once I get the double of bonus tool. So that would just be a nice little thing. At the moment, I just want to supplement my damage a little bit. So I've left it there and I'm also putting the damage into the bleed chance. Once I get that doublet, I will do that. So that's kind of the build. That's where we're going with it. It's really fun. It's buttery smooth. It's probably the best Forge Guide build I've ever played. And I think that you guys will enjoy this as well.